What's the name of this functional group? Carboxylic acid, which means it's acidic. Which means that this actually has two different forms. The protonated and the deprotonated form. This has a protonated and a deprotonated form. Uh, any acid uh, starts off protonated, but then it can deprotonate. So what would be the deprotonated form of this? That's true. I was being a little bit lazy, but there must be some something that's taking the H off. So it's, that's an equilibrium? Uh, it depends on the conditions. The only point I wanted to make now is, in some conditions, this will be the major product, and in some conditions, this will be the major product. So it's important from now on, anytime you end up with a carboxylic acid, to ask, what should our final product look like? The protonated or the deprotonated? So if you're in acidic condition, you should be in the protonated, you should have the protonated. Perfect. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, basically, if you are in acidic or neutral conditions, we would have the normal form of the carboxylic acid. The key thing, though, is if, you, if there's any bases around, if there's any bases around, you should have the deprotonated form. So you have to watch out if there's any And this is something that usually uh, very often ends up costing people a couple of points on some of the problems. Uh, they forget to look at it. Uh, so anytime you, you've produced a carboxylic acid as your final product, check to see if there's any bases around. And if there is, the carboxylic acid really isn't the final product. It's the deprotonated carboxylic acid. This is what's called a, a carboxylate. So we just essentially, if we see that there is, then we have to deprotonate it. Even if though it may base. not require, I mean, yeah. it does, may not look like it should. Like, that looks perfect to me, the OH. But there's well, no so what I should say is, Suppose that, so uh, yeah. Suppose that we had this situation. Or does it help? If there was a decent catalyst? base like this, if there was a decent base like this, then you definitely got to do this. I might be getting a little bit ahead of myself. I thought you guys might have already started covering this, but maybe you will get into this more when you get into proteins, and this might make more sense. Uh, but pretty soon you'll be seeing a lot of cases where sometimes the final product is a carboxylic acid, and sometimes it's a carboxylate. And the way to tell is if there's any good bases around, then you have to deprotonate. Maybe we'll come back to that later. Maybe you guys haven't gotten into that as much yet as I thought. Uh, but it'll be coming up soon. I mean, he definitely was like all about if you're in acidic versus right. basic conditions. He didn't want right. to go over some of the mechanisms. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. So anyway, now we've seen uh, our first example here of hydrolysis. Uh, so in general, what type of functional group does hydrolysis make? Carboxylic. It pretty much always makes a carboxylic acid, right? You can hydrolyze many different types of starting materials, but no matter what type of starting material you hydrolyze, you're going to be making a carboxylic acid as one of the products. Because you're going to end up with an OH in the, on the carbonyl where the L group used to be. All of these can be hydrolyzed. Any of the things in this chart here can be hydrolyzed. And that means uh, if you uh, treat any of these, uh, uh, you, uh, although sometimes it, uh, yeah, any of these can be hydrolyzed. Sometimes it needs a catalyst, though. Sometimes it needs uh, base or acid catalyzed, which we didn't need here. That's actually why these are all called carboxylic acid derivatives. They're all called carboxylic acid derivatives because they can all be hydrolyzed to carboxylic acids. That's the basic definition of a carboxylic acid derivative, something that can be hydrolyzed to a carboxylic acid. Okay, so we should keep uh, looking at uh, actual examples here because there's lots of ins and outs. Anything in that chart. Yeah, any of these four things in the chart uh, can be hydrolyzed to a carboxylic acid. That's why they're called carboxylic acid derivatives.